Next up is uh, to hear in this session, we're going to talk about technology. And technology is a tool that in the right hands can empower and elevate uh, 21st century uh, education. But one thing technology cannot do and should not do is replace educators interacting, building relationships with students, but it can be used to help transform how we teach and how we improve outcomes. And as we embrace all the different possibilities of education outside of brick and mortar and inside brick and mortar classrooms, we've got an opportunity to think how do we utilize technology to improve access, increase effectiveness, and provide world-class education. And joining us today is Scott McNeely. He's a famous uh, tech op entrepreneur, uh, co-founder of Sun Microsystems and co-founder of Curriki, which is a free technology resource educators. And as he likes to say, did I mention it's free? Uh, he, he piloted Sun Microsystems from a legendary, uh, legendary silicon giant, one of the great uh, pantheons of successes in the whole Silicon Valley. Computer, computing infrastructure, network computing, open source software, and he's taken all of those skills over decades of, of creating wealth for shareholders, transforming uh, uh, companies, disrupting industries, and now he's dedicating his time to Curriki, which is exploring how technologies can transform the way educational experiences are designed, how they're created, how instructors can be empowered with new tools to create amazing content to deliver to their students. So uh, it's great to have you with us. Join me in welcoming tech entrepreneur and co-founder Scott McNeely. We've got you up on the big screen here live, Scott. We've got you broadcasting all over the state of North Dakota. But I, I just want to say as a further form of introduction, uh, I'm honored to have you here because, and I, and for the, I just want to warn everybody. Uh, I've known Scott for 42 years. <clears throat> Scott has been so right so many times and so far ahead of everyone that if you hear something today and say, this isn't, isn't really for me or that'll never work or whatever the whole thing, then I just want you to wait five or 10 years or 20 years and then watch the future unfold. But remember the kind conversation you're going to have here. It's happened to me so many times, I need, I need to tell you about it. It was, it was uh, the late 80s when Scott said, the network is the computer. That was before anybody had even coined the phrase talking about the internet or cloud computing. Uh, when, when Steve Jobs and Apple introduced the first iPod, which was, remember, the little device that you could store 100 songs on, Scott's reaction wasn't a wow and amazement. His was like, why are you going to need that when someday we're all going to have access to phones and all of the, the music in the world will be stored and you'll be able to access that. So he was unwowed by that. And of course, privacy, which we've already talked about this morning when we talked about our KW initiative, in 1989, he made, made statements about privacy and the internet and really foretold everything that we're seeing today with all the cybersecurity issues. That was 31 years ago. Uh, he looked about exactly the same, the man that never ages. Uh, but anyway, thanks for being with us, Scott, uh, and uh, great to have you here. Tell us a little bit about, you started on this journey, you spun Kiriki out of Sun, I think 16 years ago, uh, to really tackle, at the time, I don't even think it was called Open Educational Resources, but tell us a little bit about the history and your passion for wanting to do that. I'd love to, <clears throat> I'd love to, and thanks for uh, the audience, and uh, thanks to all of the uh, first responders out there in the education world. Uh, you're, uh, you're on the front lines and absolutely critical as we go through this crazy time we're in. And Doug, about privacy, just understand that all your secrets are very secure and safe with me, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> your re-election is safe. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I've always thought that uh, <clears throat> self-paced, real-time scoring, on-demand learning is is a is part of the holy grail. Not because we want to replace the teachers, but because we want the teachers to have more time individually, <laughs> office hours, working group uh, collaboration, their own pace, at their own uh, their own style, their own man, after their own passions. And I always thought, why, why is it that we all have to try and learn the same things at the same time, at the same pace, in the same room, and we have to be quiet the whole time that's happening? And the classroom environment just isn't, isn't how, we, how we work. So uh, what's the problem? We have fragmentation. We have so many different ways to try and create online real-time learning and, and, and to drive the flipped classroom. There's so many different architectures, platforms, 
uh, technology uh, interfaces, and we haven't standardized on a common way to create active learning experiences. So at, at Curriki, what we've decided to do is create a free and open source version of, think about uh, Windows, uh, the platform, they have a visual studio to create applications for Windows. There's uh, an application to create uh, PowerPoint slides called Microsoft Office. There's Apple has a development environment to create uh, a phone applications. We had a Java Studio to create Java apps. Well, we're creating Cricky Studio to create real-time online uh, learning experiences. And we're putting, uh, putting this out there for free. And I encourage uh, uh, Doug and the, the state to put up on, uh, maybe we should just go to Microsoft and have them put it up on Azure and make it available to all the educators in North Dakota for free. Uh, a complete experience to allow each teacher to create their own personal uh, environment uh, or uh, active learning experience, if you will, on their subject matter of expertise. You don't have to, uh, you could share what other teachers have done, but uh, we provide Curriki Studio to create these active learning experiences. What do we have today? Shaky YouTube videos for the kids at home. We have PDFs. We have worksheets, we have electronic textbooks, which are no, no more exciting than the physical textbooks. You just don't have to carry them around. What we wanna do is activate everything. And uh, we have hundreds of activations that we're embedding into the Curriculum Studio to do interactive video, true, false, fill in the blank, multiple choice, drag and drop, flashcards, virtual tours, audio recorders, uh, speak the words, memory games. We're integrating GeoGebra, which has hundreds and, uh, of, of different uh, simulations like graphing calculators, scientific calculators, how to do parallelograms, uh, augmented reality, 3D calculus, geometry. And then we're integrating the FET products, uh, which you can look these up, PHET, GeoGebra, is uh, how it sounds. And there's 80 plus simulations around physics, chemistry, math, earth sciences. Uh, everything that you could imagine uh, out there, we're going to put in. We're grabbing all of this free and open stuff, open source stuff. And without any programming, without any computer knowledge, if you can do PowerPoint slides, uh, you, can, uh, you can build out your own active learning experience. Hopefully, someday, we'll get people like Elon Musk to donate $20 million to create, uh, let's call it Games of, of Electricity. Uh, sponsored by Tesla, donated by um, Elon Musk. And imagine not just a little worksheet or a little project or a little um, uh, online experience, but imagine a epic, like Game of Thrones or Tiger King. Uh, during, the, during the lockout, I watched the whole Tiger King. I, I binged on it. I was scared. I was at home, locked down. I admit it. Don't, don't judge me for watching Lion King or uh, Tiger King, but <laughs> why do we spend all of that money creating really kind of junk? I mean, it doesn't really educate our kids at all, but it's very bingeable. And then we have all of these addictive, dopamine addictive games like Fortnite and Minecraft and others. Why don't we have a dopamine addictive content for our students? Why aren't we spending and putting the world's best teachers and the best celebrities and, and most entertaining kids and are uh, entertaining uh, speakers in front of our kids in these epic games of calculus or games of, why doesn't Dow Chemical sponsor games of chemistry? Uh, Larry Ellis can sponsor games of Java. We wanna get the world creating small and large, uh, interesting and epic content using our studio. Think of it as the Time Warner studios of curriculum. And uh, we just need to get uh, the producers and creators to put the money, time and energy into building stuff that is interactive and uh, more importantly, compatible with every, what everybody else is doing. So it's a big deal, but it's it can be very small. We have a teacher uh, on our board who took his summer investment class and activated it using curriculum all without any training, uh, no technology required. So that was kind of a, a quick overview of what we're doing. Uh, Doug, maybe you could uh, 
uh, ask some more specific questions to help flesh that out. Well, S Scott, you've done this before. I mean, you revolutionized the whole computer industry. There was a time when there was uh, the fragmentation. You wrote a program and only worked on one machine. Uh, the work that you did with Java and Java Studio and Java Virtual Machine, you created this concept where a person could write once and it would run anywhere. And, and with, with Curriki Studio, uh, you take a teacher without programming background, they create some amazing thing and they can put it up on any learning management system uh, that exists wherever. I know we've got many of those across the state, but you write once, it runs anywhere, same concept, you've done it before. Uh, but this is a really empowering to teachers. You're giving them tools to be able to do things they would never have been able to do before uh, without a deep amount of technical experience. I want to hire you to be in our marketing department. There's two <laughs> products. There's Curriki Studio, which allows you to create this active learning experience or application. And then we have Curriki Go, which is one button push to any learning management system out there. Today, we've got several uh, implemented. By the end of the month, we'll have a whole bunch more. And if there's any learning management system you want us to uh, connect to, just let us know, uh, send me an email or whatever, Doug, Doug's doug got it, and uh, we'll make sure that we implement that uh, immediately. We're using all of the standard APIs. So it is exactly what, create and share and, 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 and put right into your learning management system. It talks to the grading uh, environment inside of that. Uh, so we're not trying to reinvent the learning management system. We're just trying to, we're trying to, upload really, really great stuff into that, uh, into that learning management system and making it available to the kids uh, anywhere and everywhere. And it's all uh, phone ready. I mean, this is, this is the platform that we're, we're targeting uh, uh, the kids to have access to this stuff. Now, what does this do? I think this gives the kids a chance to learn what is typically the whiteboard, you know, teacher in front of the class um, content, all of the knowledge gathering and, and uh, getting some of those experiences. So we can spend more time at school doing the things that kids would rather be doing at school, and that's interacting and getting out of their chair and doing things. And that means sports, that means visual arts, performing arts, it means science labs, it's debate club and robot club, and it's recess and lunch. Those are all activities and most importantly, uh, I know when my kids went through school, the most important part of their education was teachers' office hours, where they could, when they were stuck or they wanted to go farther or they were interested in things, would go sit down with a teacher one-on-one -on -one and be able to talk to them and ask them. Now, we can do push to talk and have teachers' hours electronically uh, like we're doing here, but it is so much nicer when you can sit down at the desk with the teacher and, and work through your stuff. I want more time for teachers to be doing that with, uh, with kids on a one-on-one -on -one basis or orchestrating uh, group learning and collaboration because Lord knows when we get out in the real world, it, it's not about hanging out you know, on, your, on your screen. It's about interacting and, and being social and, and, uh, and learning how to, how to do teamwork kinds of things. So I, I believe this technology will buy teachers more time to do the the really powerful things that uh, they can do on campus. Well, that makes complete sense because that's what you've always done, Scott, when you've added productivity into people's lives and all the industries you've touched, you've freed up more time for them to work on higher value interactions. So this is in line with what you've been doing your whole career. Uh, when we think about the moment right now, we knew that education was going through a transformation. Then we throw COVID-19 on top of it. Uh, we disrupt all the traditional patterns. You're someone who has, who, who has an innovator, a company builder, a value creator. You've taken moments of, of disruption and accelerated ahead of the competition. I mean, what would you say to educators now during this time of disruption uh, on, on how they can move ahead as opposed to get knocked backwards? Well, yeah, and, and you know, change is always tough. And, and I, I, I encourage change always. It doesn't feel good. When you're doing the same thing you've been doing for years, you, you go home at night and say, I killed it. I didn't make any mistakes. I did it exactly right. My productivity, my output was really, really good. Uh, and then when you ask somebody to do something differently, all of a sudden they're kind of falling down. They're making mistakes. People are hollering at them, uh, that people are confused. And you're not really good at what you're doing. 
but change has got to happen. What COVID and the lockdowns have done is they moved 10 years of transformation into about three months. I don't know that we're ever going back to a completely normal uh, environment. I don't, you know, in the business world, I don't know that people are going to go back to a lot of office space. Uh, I, you know, mall, malls are going to be forever different. Uh, so I think education is going to change. We started this last year to do Curriculum Studio, not anticipating lockdowns and and COVID. Uh, so our timing was a little bit lucky there, but we did see the move coming to want to do uh, remote learning. And and by the way, this is a lifelong issue. One of the things that we're building into Curriculum applications that we think is important is that every time somebody does something in a Curriculum app, we want it to inform and download into the student's personal achievement portfolio. We don't want necessarily the schools to have that transcript or the testing company or the business or uh, anybody to own that other than the student and the parent. And it's a secure, safe, private, encrypted, lifelong uh, transcript or achievement portfolio that they can share when they want to go to uh, uh, North Dakota State, uh, they they ask, let me see your school transcript, but also I'd like to see your achievement portfolio to find out what you really like, what you really are interested in. And uh, kids can be uh, free to share what they want out of their uh, achievement portfolio. And if you tried trigonometry and it wasn't your gig and you failed it, you don't have to share that with them. It allows people to experiment and try other things without, without uh, any kind of consequence for that. I, that's, that's one of the magic pieces I think we can add to uh, by adding technology to this uh, distance learning, remote learning, real-time scoring environment. The other thing is nobody goes at the same pace and allowing people to go at their, their pace as opposed to the pace of the slowest kid in the classroom. You know, that's kind of like no child held back is basically no, no parent, teacher or child uh, allowed to go as fast, or, or no, I'm sorry, no child left behind is, you know, that's basically slowing everybody else down in each and every topic. We all have, we all have like fingerprint uh, abilities uh, and passions and capabilities and interests in learning. And, and let's let people explore those. I, I'm, I've never been a big fan of common core because we don't have, we don't have common uh, intellects and personalities and passions and capabilities and experiences. And I think we know, we need to let kids grow at their own pace in the, in different areas. My theory, I may be wrong. I have four boys. They're all very different. And I think they all came from the same father. So. <laughs> Since you brought up the boys, I, I think for the, uh, you're practically an honorary North Dakotan, uh, maybe share the, the, the four names of your boys with our, with the viewing audience today. Yeah, they're they're all uh, they're all kind of America Americana. Uh, they all have second meanings, and I grew up in the Detroit area, so they're all former or they're all named after uh, automobiles. So there's Maverick, who's you know, that's that's not surprising to anybody, and, and everybody knows the uh, the history behind Maverick. And then Dakota is my second, and we used to come come to Fargo and then go to Detroit Lakes all the time, and and we became big fans of of North Dakota and. Uh, Rumor has it it means friend and in, uh, in, in the Sioux or some some uh, native language. I can't remember exactly which. And then Colt or Little Horse, as we call him, is my third. And and then we've got Scout. Now, I hope I don't have to change all these names because I've offended somebody. But uh, it, it was it was really in, in honor of Americana and, and our history and our heritage that uh, and also cars. Uh, that uh, we named named these kids that way. So if we had a girl, it was going to be Mustang Sally, but uh, we never did get the girl. <laughs> and Scott, with the with with you and Susan raising these uh, four amazing boys of yours, you've seen them go through school. When you could think about uh, Kariki Studio, and we think about, we know that sometimes teachers find themselves uh, dealing with technology, and they find their students are more adept than than. Uh, than they are because of the generation they're coming from. Would you imagine that this fall when we head back into school that students are gonna grab this tool and, uh, and that they're gonna actually uh, be developing uh, uses for how they use for school projects, for, for, for building curriculum? 
Yeah, I, you know, I, I, that's a good point. You know, we're, we're targeting this at teachers and curriculum developers. We're also targeting it at uh, corporate enterprises. They're all training their employees and their customers and uh, government agencies, trade organizations, churches. Everybody has a community that they want to educate. And doing lean back, kind of let's watch a video versus lean forward, let's answer some questions and, and play some puzzles and see some simulations and, and impact and, and, and drive, drive the conversation in the learning experience uh, is far more powerful, far more impactful, far more entertaining. And uh, I could I could see students grabbing this. They'll they'll probably grab it faster than the teachers. And for a project, they will actually uh, present and then quiz the viewer to see if they were paying attention and and they really understood that. And uh, you know, it's all built in and very easy to do. Interactive videos and all the rest of it. I, I think you're going to see some very creative work done by students who have access to this tool in the same way that you see students doing some, some beautiful presentations today using PowerPoint and Adobe and other things. I think you're going to see them do some just stunning stuff. And by the way, they may, um, they may create better content than the stuff they uh, learn the content from. And Scott, uh, this Cricky studio is new. Uh, the tool that you're building right now to empower teachers, but you've been at the open educational resources stuff. Your career, Ricky, was one of the very first ones. You know, tell us a little bit about that. Tell us during COVID, did demand shoot through the roof for all the amazing content that you have also for free on Kariki? And how, how, if people haven't accessed Kariki, how would they do that? And how would they, uh, how, how would they blend those two things together? Perfect. So Kariki is uh, C U R R I K I dot org. Uh, it's it's free and open to anybody. And we have the largest repository of free and open stuff that has been done by a lot of teachers and just uploaded. has been done by the Smithsonian or done by lots of different organizations. And it's all there and it's all free. The reason why we switched from just doing the library, which is still there and available and and just tens of millions of uh, of hits on, on this uh uh, environment. It's all secu uh, It's all been moderated and curated, so it's safe for use, unlike YouTube. And uh, but we looked at it and we said, you know, all of this content is not purpose built for interactivity, for collaboration, for AI and machine learning. It's all in. Uh, you know, we're not informing a, even a data puddle, much less a data ocean, to make the content smarter and smarter the more people that use it. So we said, let's, let's add on to that and allow us to create really neat new interactive environments. So all of the features that we're gonna be bringing to you, AR and VR, AI and machine learning, chat bots, uh, a recommendation engine that's better than the Netflix recommendation engine. Uh, we have added Immersive Reader from Microsoft. Uh, I got to meet with Satya the CEO uh, uh, online uh, a couple of weeks ago, the first thing he says is put immersive reader in there. Uh, and that allows uh, people with uh, sight disabilities to have uh, the Kariki uh, application light up with audio so that they can actually uh, enjoy and, and uh, 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 participate in the, in the whole learning experience, even though they're blind. So that's, that's a, you know, all of this is mankind versus, you know, I don't know, just it's, it's we, we're bringing the whole world of the open source mankind world to bear on this in one tool called uh, Kariki Studio. And, and uh, I encourage you all to uh, get to your district administrators, get to your uh, governors and all the rest of them and get them to tilt this up. We'll put it up on any any public cloud that is out there. Um, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, whatever. And we're talking to all of those organizations about host, hosting this to make it available to any and everybody from every kid to every uh, CEO of a, of a major corporation and everybody in between so that we can have a common architecture. Wouldn't it be nice if we had, you know, a data ocean for, for all the AI machine learning for all learning apps? Wouldn't it be great if you had a single sign on and federated architecture? I've done this before in the computer industry. Uh, I've never done it as a nonprofit. Uh, if, uh, if any of you know any uh, uh, rich folks who want to donate, we're all 
We're all donation based. Uh, we don't have a revenue model of charging our customers um, for, for access to the software. Um, and, and the only way I know how to make this available to everybody, you know, a right is something you can give to everyone without taking from anyone. And that makes education hard to be a right. But if we do this as a dot org, people say, why don't you do this as a com and make a lot of money, Scott? Well, I'd rather do this as a dot org and allow this to be available and therefore an implicit right as opposed to an explicit right so that everyone has access to all of the technology and all of the, uh, output of, of what we're doing at Kariki. So I, I was supposed to retire, but here I am at 65 trying to change the world and, and trying to take on, you know, a lot of the uh, embedded and traditional uh, ways in which we've created content through the big three publishers. And uh, I just think we have so many more resources and so much more technology to bear on, to bring to bear on this thing that you know I I couldn't I just couldn't sit back and play golf with my boys I'm <laughs> wearing myself out doing this I ain't a young pup anymore. So I uh, got a question uh, coming in from online Scott it has to do with the uh, tech giants which you're familiar with uh, but the. Uh, Software applications is the question. Software applications, various platforms have been created by tech giants and returned billions of dollars have been earned by them, spent by various governments purchasing these platforms. I'd like to know, you know your thoughts on how to prevent these tech giants from exploiting the educational sector. Uh, and and you, maybe you've already answered that because you're coming at this from a, dog, a dot org approach in free software, but maybe just expand on this a little bit. Yeah, so, uh that's that's so true. Uh, the, I mentioned that my uh, one of my board members, he's a, a head of IT and curriculum for a, a school, a small school system in Northern California, and he put his summer program up, his investment program. Just one of the uh, many, many, many activations we have inside of Curriki around video editing, uh, he he used in his course creation and it eliminated the need to spend $9,000 a year license for a proprietary dot com uh, piece of technology. And that was just one of the activations that we have inside of there is going to save him personally uh, $9,000 in his, in his school district. So you add this up in this small school district, who knows how many uh, tens of thousands of dollars Kariki will save. Uh, and then multiply that by how many school districts are there in the United States. We're talking literally, this could save billions and billions of dollars uh, and provide a much better, more integrated and more compatible uh, and federated architecture. You know, f federating all of this into the kids' achievement portfolio, I, I think is just gonna be magic. And again, providing the ability for kids to go at their own pace uh, I'll, I'll tell you my own personal experience. I had one class at Harvard back in, I think it was 1904 when I went, uh, <laughs> and uh, it was a statistics class. It was all self-paced online on the computer, one of the first ever, and this really sort of informed my, uh, I was the uh, seed investor, the angel investor in the Western Governors University, and you can look that one up, incredibly successful online university. Uh, I was. I started the class Monday morning. <clears throat> I finished Tuesday night. I didn't sleep, shower, or eat, and I bugged the professor through the whole process. And I got an A minus, and I was done in less than forty-eight hours with the whole quarter's class. If I could have taken Harvard online, I probably would have finished in six, eight weeks. And then Gates and Balmer and Jobs and Ellison and Zuckerberg and all these other folks who dropped out probably wouldn't. Uh, wouldn't have gotten ahead of me like they did, and I wouldn't be here doing a dot org, uh, <laughs> trying to trying to change education. But uh, no regrets. But it's just I just think real time scoring, self paced on demand, federated uh, achievement portfolios, all of this stuff is just it's time it's time to happen, and it's time to happen in an open way. And again, to allow this to be an implicit right for every kid to have access. Scott, final question for today. Uh, we're just gonna look to the future. You've mentioned uh, AI and VR a couple times. Maybe expand a little bit on artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and what, what does a flipped classroom look like 10 years from now when 
today's really kind of an announcement for Curriki Studio. 10 years from now, when this thing is flourishing and is a platform, uh, what does a flip classroom look like? So the flip classroom, that's a great question. I, I envision schools becoming not a bunch of classrooms, but a bunch of labs and a bunch of athletic facilities and a bunch of auditoriums and a bunch of community spaces for kids to work together and do, do all kinds of, you know, as I mentioned, labs and debate clubs and, uh, you know, and in fact, we ought to move off campus too and, and, and have kids uh, experience uh, stuff outside uh, of campus uh, with their teachers. And the teachers are running with, I, I like to think of them as YM and YWCAs more than, than classrooms. And then we flip the classroom and, and the kids are using their, their mobile and, and pad, iPad devices and stuff to take their courses and to go at their own paces and do what they want to do. And I think, I think most of the people listening here could have finished high school if it had been all a whole bunch of, you know, games of calculus and games of uh, electricity and uh, games of, I mean, think how epic games of uh, a World War II could be and how engaging and how how much more kids would study and learn. And uh, just if we, if we put the time and money and energy uh, and really put Time Warner Studios into creating the content. And we got some electronic arts engineers uh, uh, to do, do the gamification uh, of that platform. And kids would be kids would be staying up in the middle of the night and the parents would be saying, go to bed, you know, Johnny and Mary. No, no, I've, I've got three more episodes. I'm binging on this and I'm uh, this is so exciting. And I'm not I'm not going to bed. I want I want that kind of learning, and then they go into school and they're hanging out with their kids and their 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 fellow their fellow students, and then they're going into office hours. That's the flipped classroom, and then I think, then then I think, you have a very very different. I just I just innately believe that all kids want to learn and get excited about learning and can do it on their own pace, and uh, and and uh, we can unleash the teachers. Uh, to to be with be with the kids as opposed to you know talk to the kids you know they're, they're it's a very very different environment. The AI machine learning piece is that ki some kids live, uh, learn visually, some kids learn um, by by uh, listening, some kids learn by uh, reading, so, and some kids learn by actually sitting down with a teacher. And and, and we can get machine learning to figure out how that's working. How many kids do push to talk? How many kids just want to watch the video? How many kids just do the reading? Um, you know, I had one son who's really weird. He like reads encyclopedias and textbooks for fun. That's so strange to me. I don't get it. You know, I would much rather learn by going out and talking and, and doing something like this and listening to other people. So uh, AI and machine learning will start to learn the the personal fingerprint of, of each person and how they learn it. And we'll put the recommendation engine, we'll put the right things in front of them automatically. We'll embed A-B testing and the, the product will get better and better the more people take it and the more we see what's working and what's not as we have, as we have real time and compatible assessment. So uh, I, I just look at this as we have a very, very fragmented issue that's sort of driven by the local, very, very, very local school districts. And, and I, I believe without getting rid of the local school districts, we can create a common architecture. I mean, there is a role, I believe, for technology and maybe even governments to say, hey, we're all going to drive on the right-hand side of the road. That doesn't restrict where you go. And it doesn't even restrict how fast you go, although there are other regulations for that. But it's a really good thing that we all decide whether or not you can turn right on red and what red means. And there are some basic rules of the road that I think if we can get some consolidation around that uh, we'll, we'll unleash a whole heck of a lot more innovation and um, progress. Because uh, I'm just, I'm personally not, despite all the best efforts, I'm personally not happy with uh, the progress we're making and with, with all of the money we're spending in, in the K-12 education space. And then Doug, you and I both know that, you know, lifelong learning, the, the technology has the shelf life of a banana. And in fact, knowledge and experience has the shelf life of a banana. We all need to keep learning and uh, the opportunity for lifelong uh, learning. And maybe we don't ever have to go to college because we can actually learn uh, while we go to work.
Well, Scott, uh, you've been generous with your time this morning. Uh, thank you for thank you for your uh, friendship. Thanks for being part of the program today.